Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Taking Back You Momcast. Hi guys, how you doing? It's Danny Carter Iddens and we are back for the third season of the Taking Back You Momcast. And today we are going to talk about thriving in your new normal. Listen, for many of us, school has begun and I'm sure all of you are drudging through some form of schooling for your kiddos, whether it's in-person learning, virtual learning, hybrid learning, or you just decided, you know what, I'm done and we're homeschooling and that's just what we're going to do and we're going to work our way through it. That's okay because these changes are for, you know, they're here and they're for the foreseeable future. And honestly, these changes are just the beginning. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to share a few ways with you that you can, you know, use to thrive in your new normal and you know whatever that new normal may be you're going to be able to use these to thrive and to figure out how to get through what's going on right now all right i'll see you on the other side of the intro coming to you straight from indianapolis aka the circle city this is the taking back you momcast the taking back you momcast is a witty, authentic, and sometimes sarcastic podcast for millennial mamas who are in the thick of mom life. And I'm your host, Danny Carter Iddens, wife, millennial mama, motivational speaker, and motherhood advocate. Man, I was just reflecting. I can't even believe that this is now our second year, the beginning of our second year doing the Taking Back You Mom cast here in India. I love the intro. It says from the Circle City. And yes, this is our home now. We are from the Circle City. And before we get started, I just wanted to thank all of you for coming back and for listening and for supporting Taking Back You throughout this journey. I have had so many people reach out over the summer and they're like, hey, when are new episodes? What's going on? When are they going to begin? Well, guess what? Here we are. And listen, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to this podcast and that you share it with any mamas who you think would benefit from what we talk about each and every week. And don't forget, all right, I'm asking you this. This is the new one. I got info and some mentoring and this is what they told me they said make sure you ask your listeners to rate and review your podcast so if you could do that for me whatever service you are listening to this podcast on please rate and review it so I can know what you like and what you want me to do and how I can make this podcast better and better for you. Also, at the end of today's episode, I'm going to share with you something that you will be very, very excited to know about, and it'll be ready very soon. So get excited about that. And let me tell you something, we are going to do this year a bit differently, or maybe not differently, but we are going to just kind of breeze right on through the foolishness of the last few months. We're going to talk about some ways to exist in your new normal today, and then we are just going to keep going, okay? We're going to talk about how to thrive, and then we're going to do that. We're going to practice what we preach, and we are going to thrive, because y'all know me. I'm all about looking forward. I don't like looking back and dwelling on the past, so let's do it. Here we go. I'm going to give you three ways to thrive in your your new normal, and the first way, and you've probably heard me talk about this before, the first way is to prioritize what's truly important and let the rest go for now because right now we've just got to get from a to b we don't have time to figure out how you know uh things that used to work aren't you know are going to work now we don't it, that's just not where we are right now i had one of my uh well, a good friend of mine she told me she she heard this in another talk and i thought it was such a brilliant way of saying this she said we are in what is currently an unoptimizable situation and i think that is so absolutely true it's just unoptimizable there are no perfect ways to do this so what we're going to do is we're going to just come up with some ways that work for us okay so you're going to prioritize what's important and you're going to let the rest go now i've talked about prioritizing and setting priorities 
I talked about that back in episode 28. So if you need a little bit of a refresher on what I mean by that, then you can check that episode out. But I'm going to just share with you right now a couple of tactics that I have followed throughout the last six months to make sure that I'm, you know, only taking on what I can handle right now. So one of the things, if you're a longtime listener, you know what I do. I do this all the time. I've also mentioned it in Mom Business University. And that is my five things on my post-it note. Every single night before I go to bed or before I go upstairs to my bed, really, on my desk, I write my five things that I need to get done the next day on a post-it note. And I label them one through five. Number one is the most important. And so that's why it's first. And then number five is the least important. It's important, but it's the thing that if I don't get to it that day, then I can bump it onto the top of the next day's list, okay? And the reason I do this is that, you know, it kind of um, helps me get over overwhelm. Okay, so what happens for me and for I, 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 I'm finding a lot of mamas, especially in this period of our, you know, existence, is that there are so many things that we could be, should be, would be doing that we kind of get overwhelmed and then we get into the state of arrest. And I've talked about I've talked about this in the past, but I really feel like it it. it it goes with us now is that, you know, we get into the state of arrest where we just are like, oh my gosh, I can't do any of those things. So now I'm not going to, it's just too much. It's too much. So now I'm not going to do anything because I can't even figure out where to get started. And so I'm just not. All right. And so we don't want to get in that state because then what happens is it just, you know, builds up and builds up and builds up. And before we know it, we have way, way too much on our plate and it's way too much to handle. So what we're doing is we're taking the things that have to get done. And for you, your list may look completely different from mine. But for for me, my list is, you know, my son, he is home. He is a virtual learner. And so for me, my, my first priority is to make sure that he does his schoolwork. And whatever that looks like, I'll break down what needs to happen within his schoolwork. And honestly, some of it I prioritize as important and some of it I don't. So he's got to you know, do his schoolwork. He's got to, um, you know, he's got a couple of chores that he has to do, which we'll talk about a little bit later on in this breakdown. And then there's things that I have to do. Okay. And really what it does is it makes a clear path for me to follow so that whatever happens, you know, today, I know that these are the things that must happen that must get done. And there are going to be repeats for every day. Like I said, my son's, you know, schooling Monday through Friday, that's pretty much the same. There are a couple of other things that, you know, have to happen every single day. So those are usually one, one and two. And then my three, four and five are the other things that need to happen in my life. Listen, if there are repeats, that's okay. All right. And I want you to remember that the things that were super important six months ago might not be that important right now. And so you're going to move those over into the pile of, well, I'll get to that when I get to that. And that pile, the I'll get to that when I get to that pile is number six. Okay. So if you have one through five, you got through them for the day. And then there's something that you can pull out of the I'll get to that when I get to that pile, then that's your number six. If you don't get to that, oh, well, it'll be it'll be there when you get to it and it's completely completely fine and another thing I want to I want you guys to do is, is I want you to talk to your family about how you're going to be prioritizing things okay so that they know that they need to communicate with you if anything needs to be added to your list and honestly I'm gonna I'm gonna drop I'm gonna drop some some bombs on you or 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 their list, okay? Because if you have older children, now if you have little little guys, then yeah, you're 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 kind of handling stuff for them. And if you have older children, then you know you need to get them started on doing their own lists. You need to get your significant other started on doing his or her or whoever's own list, so that everybody has. Um, you know, what needs to get accomplished for the day so that we're not all just running around trying to figure out what the heck is going on. So I, I've done this with, with, um, with my son. We have a dry erase board in our office. And on the dry erase board, I have the date at the top. And I have the things that he needs to accomplish throughout the day. And he loves it. He makes a big deal out of it. He goes and makes a check mark next to each thing as he accomplishes it. And that's the kind of, he likes that kind of, you know, 
he, he finds gratification in that. Not everybody does. And so you just kind of have to find what works and then make it happen. You can use a chalkboard. I know I have friends who have a chalkboard or a dry erase board in their kitchen. I know people who use Google Keeps. That's what I do with my husband. Him and I have Google Keeps that we share with each other. We've actually added Alex onto our Google Keeps since he's almost seven and he can read and we are like, okay, get in there and let's figure this out together. Okay. Your family also has things that they need to do. And, and you're finding, I'm sure you're finding as mothers, is that when something doesn't happen for them, usually what ends up happening is that it somehow becomes our fault or something that another thing that we have to do. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to help you get it so that you don't have to, uh, you know, be on top of everything give people a little bit you know more autonomy and have them help you and have them you know work through this you don't have to be the only one in your family to have it together all the time you can have asking you know ask the crew to to kick in and to help with setting your priorities and figuring out where you want to go what you're trying to do what the trajectory is for your family moving forward The second thing that you're going to do is that you're going to set realistic expectations for yourself and for your family. Okay, so like I said, my son is a virtual learner. And when he first got started, y'all, I was in it to win it. I was like, okay, here we go. We're going to do, we're going to, somehow I'm going to do the virtual learning. Somehow I'm going to run my business. Somehow I'm going to plan for this. Somehow I'm, and I, and guess what? That lasted, I don't even know if it lasted 48 hours. Okay. And I realized really quickly that I couldn't continue to, run my business, run my household, run anything, honestly, the same way that I had in the past. So I had to figure out kind of, you know, a whole a whole a whole nother way to do things because I added this new job to my resume and that was like uh, I, I call myself I'm not saying I'm homeschooling because I'm not homeschooling because homeschooling is a completely different thing from having a virtual learner in your house but my new title um, is virtual learner facilitator and I think that's a great title it makes me feel really cool and important <laughs> and so yeah like I realized I added that to my resume and so like some things got to go if I'm being honest because it's just not realistic to think that I could do all of the same things. So this was hard for me to understand because I love to do the things. I love what I do. I love my mamas. I love speak doing my speaking engagements. I love going all over, you know, uh, Indian, Indiana and, and some of Illinois. I love doing that, but it just isn't realistic right now. And so I had to be very choosy about when I scheduled certain things. And you might have to be that way too, and that's okay. And guess what? Sometimes you have to say no. And you don't have to be mean, and we have a whole episode and how to say no without, you know, uh, burning bridges, okay? And there's a way that most of my notes have not even been sh- straight flat notes. I think I've only had one flat out, like, can't do it, love you, not happening. No, but everything else has just been, you know what, right now, I'm not in, you know, um, that that's not something that can happen for me and my family right now. But if you give me, you know, da 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 amount of time, then I can get back to you and I would be more than happy to join you on that project. Check out the no episode if you need to learn how to say no because I know no I, I know saying no is difficult for some of us and I came up with a few ways to help you with that, all right? So if it's hard for you to, you know, come up with realistic expectations, don't worry, you're not the only one. I'm I'm the same way, but you've got to do it. And it wraps in with your priorities because you've got to figure out what is realistically going to happen. So many things have changed in the last six months that we just have to be honest with ourselves and we have to be realistic and we have to break down what, you know, break down our our lives or our days or whatever you need to do into what can actually get done. And then there's stuff that really at this point was basically a pipe dream. Okay, it's not happening. And I and I'll be honest with you, I grieved. I grieved those things, but I realized that that just wasn't going to happen right now. I, I I you know, I had a glass of wine over it and then I moved on. You know, and that's what we've got to do. We got to be realistic. And you know, when when you're setting these expectations, I think the other thing that you need to do is you need to ask for help from your friends and your family. So when I was sitting through and I was realizing this is what I can do, this is what I can't do, this is what I'm going to need help with. Okay, I reached out 
and some of you may, if you follow me on social media, you may remember when I when I talked about this, and it's very difficult for me to do, but I reached out to my friends and I asked for help. All right, I asked the moderators of Mom Business University, my group on Facebook. Uh, it's a business group for moms. If you, if you are like, what? Um, it's a business group for moms. I asked them to step in and help out a bit more while I navigated this new normal. So I said, hey, can you guys post a little bit more? Um, I'm, I'm going to take a step back for a second. The group is still going, all right? And that, that's, what we, that's what we wanted. We want to keep things going. I asked people to help me with Taking Back You, the Taking Back You group on Facebook. I said, hey, I need some help. Can we step back and figure out how we're going to regroup and make this go because I'm trying to figure out what needs to happen. And I even asked my family to chip in. So this is what I was talking about before with getting your kids involved, getting your significant other involved. Okay. Alex has chores now. He has chores because I am trying to get him to do this. I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to do this. And and there are chores that he can handle now that, you know what, I put them on him. I gave them to him. He's emptying the dishwasher now and putting the dishes away. And just that one little thing, my heavens, how much help it creates is just I it's unfathomable um and you know we give him a reward for for helping out but we definitely have him you know start to kind of pull his weight and this is for all of you with new babies my new mamas with new babies there is there there is a it's coming okay you you for all this work that you put in on the front end you do see the the rewards because when you create these amazing little people that grow up and and become helpful and and can actually help you do things it's really cool and it's really rewarding and so i'm 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 enjoying the fruits of my labor at this point right now and i told my husband what i needed from him okay i just flat out point blank i told my husband what i needed from him i wasn't passive aggressive about it i just actually told him so i think one of the things that we and we've discussed this before in the show one of the things that we sometimes accidentally do we don't mean to do it but sometimes we might be a little bit passive aggressive and not be clear about what we actually need from you know our family so one of the, the way you do that is when you just walk around you're like ah, am I the only person in this house that ever does dot 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 it's a good thing I live here because if I didn't then nothing would ever get done okay those are probably true for a lot of us but they're also passive aggressive and the men folk they're darling but sometimes they don't really understand what we mean when we say those kinds of things so I just point blank said yo I need you when you get home. I need you to do A, B, and C because that is when I need to get X, Y, Z done. Okay. I was just very clear. All right. It was very clear about it. And the other thing is too, is that I, I've had, I've had a couple moms who told me like they have been super clear with their spouses and their spouses said, no, I can't do that for you right now. But even that is, you know, is, is good because then you can say, okay, well, if you can't do it and I can't do it, then I guess what? It's not going to get done. And then everybody has their expectations laid out. It's very clear. No one's scratching their head thinking, why didn't he? Why didn't she? Why didn't we? Everybody knows. Okay. And so I, I, I implore you to do that. I implore you to just be clear about what you need, how those, you know, figure out those expectations, what can be met, what can't be met, what can be moved over into the one, the someday pile, and then what you need to make those expectations take place. And finally, I talk about this so much, you're probably going to be like, I know, lady, but I just want to really um, get it inside your brain because it is such an important thing, you know, for, for thriving and for for mindset. And, you know, like I said, I've, I've talked about it so many times, but I keep a gratitude journal. Okay. So the third thing is I want you to, you know, be gracious. I, I keep a gratitude journal and every day I write down at least one thing. All right. One thing that I'm grateful for, for that day. And I always joke that some days it's like my eyebrows looked good. And some days it's like I was able to spend the entire day with my family. You know, they're not, they can't all be hits. Okay. But 
focusing on the things that you're grateful for, you know, that can really impact your mindset and it can help you realize the blessings that you have in your life. And honestly, for me, it gives me an opportunity to go back and to see that, you know, maybe things weren't as bad as I thought they were because, you know, in the moment you're like, this is the worst. And then when you go back, you're like, yeah, I mean, that day, that was a rough day or that was a rough six months or 2020 you know, dot, dot, dot. But there were a lot of cool things that happened. I got to spend a lot of time with my family. We got to do a lot of things that we haven't done. My husband uh, basically pulled a notebook and like re, you know, modeled our entire house. I mean, you know, so there were a lot of great things that happened. And, you know, as these days were moving ever so slowly, it's ever so slowly. And so that's okay. All right. So I was able to go back and I was like, oh, this, this is good. Things weren't as bad as I thought they were. And I probably wouldn't have noticed that or I wouldn't have realized that if I wasn't taking the time to, you know, pull one thing out of each day to be thankful for. And you know what I, what I just, I ask you to do, I I share it with you all the time. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a woman of faith. And so thank God, you know, every day for getting you through this mess. Okay. So whatever your mess looks like, whatever your new normal looks like, just take some time to thank God for, you know, moving you through it, taking you to it and moving you through it. Um, you know, I, I gave a talk a, a, a few weeks ago about, um, you know, just kind of reclaiming ourselves during these, you know, uncertain times. And, and one of the things that I talked about was the fact that we should actually be happy when hard times come our way, because those are actually tests of faith from God. God is saying like, you are ready to be tested because I believe that you can overcome this. And, and, and I believe that you are strong in your faith to see, to see, you know, to see, to see to the other side. And so I kind of get excited sometimes when like crazy stuff happens because I'm like, Oh, this is a test. This is a test. I I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, go through this because I know that, you know, God's not going to give me any more than I, than I can handle. And it turns out after 2020, and I'm sure y'all can agree with me. It turns out we can handle a whole lot more than we thought we could. Okay, so, you know, it hasn't been pretty, but we are making it and we can handle a whole lot more than we ever thought we could. And and mamas, we are so resilient. Humans are resilient and mamas, I think we are like if you're a human mama, then you are super 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 even more resilient than you ever thought you could be in this life. And you know, we can do this. We can get through this. We can make it happen. We can thrive in our new normal. I know we can. I'm praying for you guys every single day. I'm praying for all of my mamas every single day. And I'm just thanking God that we are able to communicate and to connect with each other, whether it's virtually, digitally, uh, through this podcast, through social media, whatever. And I'm just so glad that we have those ways to communicate and connect. And I just know that if we keep our eyes on the prize, we can make it happen. All right, guys. So I'm, those are the three things. Let me recap them really quickly. The first thing is that you're going to prioritize. Okay. You're going to prioritize what's truly important and then you're going to let the rest go. All right. That's your very first way that you're going to thrive. And then you're going to set realistic expectations for yourself and for your family. And again, you're going to hear this a lot. You're going to let the rest go. Put it in the not right now pile. Put it in the someday pile, okay? And then finally, you're going to be thankful, okay? You're going to practice gratitude. Just write down one thing a day. And if you can come up with more things in a day, write all of them down, all right, so that you have them. You will see all the blessings that you have and all the prayers that have been answered that you forgot about or you weren't paying attention to. It is really cool to be able to look back on those things. So... Listen, I am so glad to be back with you guys every week. I'm, I've just literally I've been counting down the days that we could be together again. So yay, I'm so excited. And next week, we are going to be joined by Lisa Westhorpe. I, I, I joke with her. She's one of my Lisas. For those of you who don't know, my mother's name is Lisa. My mother-in-law's name is Lisa. My best friend's name is Lisa. There's a lot of people in my life named Lisa. And so I told Lisa Westhorpe, who is of nature, occupational, nature, that's not true, nurture, occupational occupational therapy. I told her, I'm like, Lisa, I'm going to add you to my my little um, pile of Lisa's that I have. And so she was very excited to be a part of that. And, and next week, she's going to talk to us about taking care of our bodies 
while we take care of our babies. So Lisa is a maternal health occupational therapist and there have been so many mamas in my life that have been having new babies and let's be honest with COVID there's probably going to be a lot more of us who are having babies. And so I wanted to bring Lisa in to talk to us about how to balance taking care of ourselves while we're also taking care of our kids. I hope you are having a great week. And I'm so excited to be able to say that again. I hope you are having a great week and that you're, you know, enjoying this last little drip of summer that we have. Here in Indy, we're kind of going through a little bit of a hot surge, but I know some other people on the in the West um, in, in the farther west part of the country, y'all had winter. Y'all had a snowstorm yesterday. So I'm praying for you. <laughs> I'm praying that you are okay. And I wanted to tell you the, about one thing I talked about at the beginning. I wanted to share with you before we go that the Taking Back You MomCast is going to have an online store. Yay! So by next week, you are going to be able to purchase fun Taking Back You MomCast shirts, jackets, mugs. I'm going to be figuring out what else we can do. I'm really excited to share that with you. It's something that I've been wanting to do for a while, but you know, hashtag mom life. So um, it's finally happening. So be on the lookout for that. I'll talk about it more next week. And like I said, don't forget to subscribe and share. I am so glad you're here. I am so glad that you are here. Like seriously, I'm so glad you're here. This is... um. This has been such a blessing for me as well. I've shared before that one of the things, one of the ways that God teaches me is that he has me teach others. And I realize usually about halfway through the research for the lesson is that, oh, wait, this is this is actually a message that God wants me to have as well. So I am so glad that you are here and I will be back with you next week. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Thanks so much for listening. For more information on Taking Back You and the Taking Back You MomCast, visit us at takingbackyou.com. From there, you'll be able to follow us on social media, listen to past episodes, and learn all about the mission of Taking Back You. Be sure to subscribe to get future episodes. And from all of us at Taking Back You, thank you so much for your support.